Let's take a look at what reference geometry is. The importance of reference geometry becomes obvious in situations where you need to create geometry that doesn't really line up with any standard planes that you may already have, such as this front, top, or right plane. So you will typically create planes to represent any faces on your model. You'll make an axis to indicate a direction that you may possibly want to pull something, such as an extrude or a pattern. And you'll also create some coordinate systems that may be useful when you're moving parts from one system to another system. You create this reference geometry to make your work a lot simpler. And it's going to depend upon your design, how you create your geometry. So here I have a simple design that's open. We create a sketch of just some simple objects and extruded them here. Is You can go ahead and this sketch one actually right here. We just two rectangles, two circles, extruded them out. I'll go ahead and exit this sketch here. We went ahead and did the extrude. You can see the feature here. And then I created a sketch with two points that I placed. I can go ahead and unselect that. There's a point there and a point right there. Let's go ahead and create some reference geometry. You can find rep reference geometry in this panel over here. If we go ahead and select this drop down menu, we can create a plane, an axis, a coordinate system, a point. We can even create the center mass of these objects here. Let's go ahead and just play with that one and see what it does. If, we, if you go ahead and select that, you see in the feature manager on the left, we have the center mass. So among these objects here, the center mass is right there. That could be very useful. Let's go ahead and create a new plane. Well, let me show you a new trick besides actually creating that. You have these planes here. So if we have this top plane here, for example, and we want to create a plane, one easy trick to create this plane a lot quicker is to hold down control left click on the plane when you see the cursor change and it has that little up down left right cursor we go ahead and see it changing back and forth and then go ahead and click it with your left mouse click and then drag it up or drag it down and you can place it as you want this will go ahead and by default just have you drag it up with one reference we can place it there or we can adjust it i'll go ahead and just accept that for now hit ok so as you can see now i have a plane on top and if i have it selected I can go ahead and create a sketch on that. Let me go ahead and make sure it's normal too. We can simply draw another circle on top. You can go to features, extrude that again. Just keep it as it is. As you can see, we are creating a more three-dimensional geometry than we could have before. If you want to turn off these planes as well, when we create additional planes, we can go ahead and just highlight the plane here and select hide. So that way we don't have to see the plane. It's very useful, as you can see, creating multiple planes to create your services to extrude. Let's take a look at an axis. This is something that you may want to use if you want to revolve something or do a revolved cut. We can use many of these features here. We can do two planes where they intersect and create an axis. We can create it from two points. We can select a cylindrical surface and it will drop an axis between. We can even do a point and face as well as a line on the edge. So if we were to select here, for example, and hit OK, it places an axis right there. There's also another useful trick up here if you come to the menu and you go to View, once I get that open. We can also go to Temporary Axis. So every time we have a cylinder, there's already placed an uh, axis for us right in the middle. Let's go ahead and try and create one more axis. Let's just do it from two points. We'll go ahead and select this point here and maybe a point over here in the corner and there you go you got an axis that connects those two so maybe you can create a sketch that's somewhere along this any of these planes really and you can revolve it around that axis to create some more three to three dimensional geometry let's go ahead and look at the coordinate system currently we have it set to right here this x and the y but maybe you wanted to change the coordinate system for the x and the y we could go ahead and Choose a new X axis right here. And then you see the coordinate system has moved from there to here. And then we can also pick a new Y axis. So we can flip it there. And by default, Z is automatically going to be flipped in that direction. We can always flip these around. Just to indicate the positive and negative direction of the axis. Flips it around a bit. That could be very useful if you want to, as you can see, maybe draw some rectangles and have everything lined up in a different angle and lastly we have points that we can place 
these can pretty much just be anywhere. We could do the center of arcs, the intersection of objects, projection, center of a face. So maybe if you want to draw something that was exactly in the center of this face, you can go ahead and place a point there and go ahead and accept that. And then if we were to, for example, let me call this center, accept that. If we were to select this face and to go ahead and sketch on it, we could automatically have a point to place it in. We're going to have guidelines, of course, to help us out, or we could create a diagonal line and lock to the center to make sure it's always centered at that point. But this is just another useful trick if you have some awkward geometry where you're unable to actually find the center. I'll go ahead and discard those changes for now. So as you can see, playing around with reference geometry gives you a lot more flexibility when you're trying to create new objects. 